Hi, everyone. My name is Jessamyn Gray. I am a local elementary librarian here in Nashville, and I am so excited to welcome you back to another year of Southern Festival of Books. Um, I'm so thankful for everyone that's able to join us either tonight or being able to watch this recording later. Um, thank you again to all of our sponsors. And as always, you are welcome to purchase any of the books that we talk about tonight through Parnassus, our local independent bookshop here in Nashville. I am going to be joined tonight by Stefan Pastis. You might know him from Timmy Failure and most recently his newest book, Trouble Town, and also Amy Timberlake, who is the author of Skunk and Badger. And the second, the most recent one is Egg Marks the Spot. So welcome to both of you. Thank you. I think we're just waiting on Amy to join us. There we go. Hi, Hi guys. Thank you. Thanks for being here tonight. Thank you. Um, I have to admit, I've had your books on, well, the newest ones, of course. So we've got Trouble Town and then Egg Marks the Spot on my desk this week. And I about had to fight some um, third and fourth graders to keep them for myself. Yay. And I keep telling them, you have to be patient. I need them for a little bit longer. Um, <laughs> But yes, I mean, anything that uh, gets the kids excited about reading, we're always excited to, to have you guys around. So thank you. Thank you. Um, do either of you have a preference of who wants to, to go first and tell us a little bit about probably, let's start with going over the, the, the newest titles that you both have out that just came out within the last few weeks. Um, let us know a little bit more about them and then we can go from there. Right, Amy, yeah. do you want to start? Okay. <laughs> um, I, so I'm going to give you a little plot, a sort of a plot outline of the two books. All right. So Skunk and Badger, these two books go together and Skunk and Badger is the story of this badger. Oops. This badger. <laughs> okay, this badger here, um, and who does important rock work, and he does this work every day, very diligently, all the time. And here is Badger at his rock table doing his important rock work. I mean, seriously, this is all he does. He loves it, though. It's his life. He thinks about it all the time. He walks to the grocery store and thinks about rocks. He comes home. He thinks about rocks. And he's saying, focus, focus, focus. I must focus, focus, focus. And then one day, there's this knock at the door, rap, 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 rap. And it is this skunk right here. And this skunk is Badger's unexpected roommate. And unexpected roommates never go well. In this case, not only is skunk unexpected, but he's very different personality. And so as I was writing, I was seriously sort of worried that maybe they were too different and that they wouldn't go together. Um, but in um okay so now i'm just going to read this little section okay so i'm going to read this little section from the first book of where the second book came from just so you can kind of get a flavor of these stories if you haven't and in this scene um badger is showing skunk his uh geological survey maps and these are maps that show the rocks that are under the ground. So you can actually see what, if you have a hill outside your window, you could actually see what, like, what kind of hill is there. So um, here's, this is very short, I promise. Badger told Skunk how he used maps on rock finding expeditions. Skunk gasped, rock finding expedition? What is that? Badger explained about how he camped out. Under the stars, interrupted Skunk. Technically, yes, but with a picnic every day, interrupted Skunk again. I guess I do eat outside. Skunk hopped from one foot to the other. What else? What else? So Badger explained how clues in the landscape led to a particular rock. Skunk slapped his paw on the map, like X marks the spot. Sort of, yes. 
Then Skunk turned and said, Badger, what are we waiting for? So this is Egg Marks the Spot. And so obviously something different happens. This is not a spoiler. Well, first of all, it's not a spoiler that they remain roommates, kind of, because there's book two. And then it's not X Marks the Spot. So Egg is a clue <laughs> that something else happens. And it does get pretty wacky and wild what does end up happening um but the plot is that badger is going to go find a replacement for his spider eye agate which is his letter a rock for his wall of rocks and has been taken years ago by his crafty cousin fisher who is right there on the spine um and Skunk also just wants to go, besides wanting an adventure, he wants an adventure because there's this hedgehog that is taking his book review, and he loves a book review, and he cannot imagine going through another Sunday without his book review, so he just wants to get out of there before another Sunday goes by. So Badger and Skunk head out on this rock-finding expedition camping trip to campsite number five at Endless Lake, and all sorts of mayhem and chaos ensues. <laughs> you know, I'm in the middle of, of teaching a lesson to third and fourth about doing a 60 second book review that, you know, hooks, oh, no. hooks the audience. <laughs> a little longer. We're, we're, but no, but that reminds me of that, of now, well, now I want to sit down and read the book and, you know. Um, but question, Amy, so did you like geology before you started writing these books or did you fall in love with geology? At, and I am I am making the assumption that you are also into rocks just because I feel like that passion kind of comes across on the page. And if not, you do a fantastic job of creating that within the characters. I, I, I think there was probably a latent rock excitement inside me somewhere that I didn't know about. I knew that I knew that Badger needed a passion and rocks called out to me. So I will say that my my uh, my uncle was a geologist growing up. And I did think that was really cool. They flew him places, you know, like he rode in a helicopter. I'd never read, I, I've never, I, I hadn't ridden in a helicopter. Um, so anyway, he had adventures. And I, so I thought that geology was a very exciting profession. And then uh, my, my uh, grandfather was a lobbyist for the copper industry. Oh. So when I visited them in New Mexico, they're, their land, their yard was landscaped with old mining equipment and weird rocks. So if you're, I'm from Wisconsin. So when I visited, yeah, I mean, I was like, what, who does this old mining? I mean, they were like, you know, it was crazy stuff, like these weird blue rocks and they weren't turquoise, but they're kind of like a rock that shows up before you hit copper. So yeah, so I guess, I guess I didn't think that I really was into rocks, but then I started writing and it called out, you know, he needed a passion, rocks called out. And now, yeah, it's, ooh, it is really cool stuff and really intense to learn about. It's really a hard, <laughs> ooh, it's a science. I mean, oh my it, gosh. It man. is, it is. <laughs> I have to I have say so as a fellow, <laughs> a fellow former Wisconsinite, who is married to someone that grew up in New Mexico. I understand all of these references and where you would go from point A to point B with that. Good. So oh, I do, good. I do. <laughs> um, so there's, am I correct in understanding that there's not going to be a book three with oh, this or maybe? Oh, there it's is, under, okay. It's under a contract. It's oh, perfect, definitely I was gonna, wrong. There's a book three. <laughs> And I, I, I don't know. Yeah, there's going to be a book three, just probably not next year, but it's coming. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure you have enough things to do. Um, 
So let's turn it over. Stefan, do you want to tell us a little bit about Trouble Town? And I have to admit, I, I'm going to try really hard not to say trouble with tribbles or make any Star Trek references other than that one. That's it. I didn't even know what the tribbles were. Somebody just posted that and I, I learned that. That's funny. <laughs> I, I, I think I got it from my grandparents. I'm going to, I'm going to blame it on that because I'm pretty sure it was before my time, maybe. That's funny. Well, mine is about um, this little girl named Wendy the Wanderer who has a very overprotective father. And when she's left with a careless babysitter, um, she runs out into the world to explore. And the first thing she does is um, give a sugary drink to uh, Squirrely McSquirrel. And the squirrel spazzes out, becomes addicted to sugar, causes a whole lot of problems in the town. So finally, the mayor has to step in and ban the giving of sugar to squirrels. Uh, which seems to solve the problem. But then the mayor's office explodes and uh, the town falls apart. So that's it in a nutshell. <laughs> Don't mess with squirrels. No, squirrels are always a little trouble. <laughs> Tribble, trouble. <laughs> yeah. So with this being a more of a graphic novel, did you feel, I mean, because um, Pearls Before Swine, right, was, was where you got your footing and got started and then everything else came. Do you feel like this was was going back to your roots a little bit or do, were you just wanting to do a different format, try something new? Yeah, you know what I have what? no idea. Yeah, it was, um, I went to a book signing actually uh, of Dave Pilkey, who I know, and I was mm -hmm. talking to him before and, and it just sort of something, a bell rang and I said, I should try a book like Dogman. Um, and Dogman, I, I think is, um, you know, it's fairly simply drawn, which mm -hmm. I love. I love that sort of, I guess, cruder style of art. It just appeals to me. And so I thought I'll try it. And uh, um, COVID hit, we're all stuck at home and everything like all of you. And so I just got a big stack of copy paper and uh, the worst pen I could buy, which was this uh, Sharpie, because I wanted it to bleed as I drew, because it, it makes you write a lot faster and sloppier, okay. and I love that look. And I just laid here on the floor of this room and just drew whatever came to my head. And really, it was kind of like just therapy for me to just create this world to distract me from you know, what we were all seeing um, around us. But it all started with Dogman, just going to Dave's signing. That was really the inspiration. Because I had done chapter books, like the Timmy books, but I had yeah. never done, I guess what you'd call a graphic novel. Um, so uh, yeah, I loved it. It was super fun. <laughs> I, I feel like we're going to see a, a generation of, of authors that have been inspired by Dave because you know, I see year after year kids that love his work and are inspired by his story and why he started drawing and creating stories. And I, and I think that's really important. And I think it's important for authors to be accessible and, and talk to students about, you know, I was a horrible student and I doodled all the time and there we go. And, yeah. uh, or I would write, sit in the back and instead of writing down the assignment, I was writing stories about, you know, characters that were in my head and I think it's important for them to see what options are out there. I don't I don't know that they always think, oh, I can grow up and write books. <laughs> yeah. So I agree. Yeah. Um so question for both of you or neither of you if you choose to pass on this. Um are there any books that are coming out in the next year or so other than anything that you have on your plate that you are excited to see? Anything by any other authors that you have heard about coming down the pipeline that you're excited about? I always want to get the scoop. Like what's, what's coming out? Go ahead, it's going to be really good. <laughs> well, I mean, I, I am really interested to see what this, uh, the pony book is that's coming out by, uh, I, I don't know how to say her name, but RJ Palacio, Palacio, you know, I know okay. everybody, it's yep. a big one that's Wonder. coming out and yes. And I'm, I'm interested in her next one for sure. Um, okay. Just to see, are you looking, are you looking for kids books in particular? I mean, we can, or we can go adult. Yeah. 
No, no. I'll take I, whatever yeah, you I'm, want. I'm assuming. Yeah, but th- but yeah. Anyway, <laughs> I'm done. Go ahead, Stephanie. Yeah, and it's funny, you know, I sort of take the opposite approach <laughs> other than Dave's book. I really don't, um, when I go to write a book in a genre, I try not to look. I mean, I've always done that with the comic strip. I try not to read the comics page. And it's only because... I think when you have to be a creative person for a living, you're a sponge. And sometimes you mm-hmm. are, a, um, you don't even realize you're a sponge. So it all goes in there and you don't want to be, I mean, I don't want to be derivative of somebody else. And I don't want an idea planted in my head that I then use that belongs to somebody else. So the truth of the matter is um, I really read a lot of history um, and travel books okay. Um that's um, that's sort of how I, I do it. It's kind of a strange way, but um, yeah, I don't know. That's my method. Yeah. All right. So the the truth the truth is for me is that I yeah for the same reason I don't read a ton of kids lit because I really do I, I really do want to kind of keep my head kind of clear and I so I what I have been doing lately is I find um, some sort of writer that really speaks to me. And then I've read almost everything they've written. And I just finished up, um, I just finished up Margaret Atwood. (laughs) I just finished uh, Jane Gardam. I love Kate Atkinson and I cannot wait. Oh my goodness. I cannot wait for her next book. I, she just really, and if, um, if, Tony Morrison were still alive, I would be, I would be just waiting. <laughs> like, please send me, send me another book, Tony Morrison. <laughs> so I have, yes. Oh, and uh, um, Tim, um, oh, there's uh, Tim, uh, Tim Winton, Tim, oh, Tim, why am I? Anyway, he's a, he's a big Australian writer. He writes sports. He writes men. He writes movement really well. I love his stuff. Um, he wrote Breath. He wrote... Oh, I read um, that. That's really good. What? I read that. That's really good. Yeah, that guy. Oh, my goodness. Everything. If you want to... Like, I think he's the best sports writer ever. If you want a body in motion, he is the guy. So, yeah, so I end up reading all this other stuff. And lately, the thing that's been great about reading a whole person's work is that I really start, especially, I mean, because I love, I love how these people write. It it starts, I, I, I can almost feel how they might solve a problem when I get to a similar kind of, it's, it doesn't feel like I'm, I'm um, copying their style, but mm-hmm. I can figure out, oh, this is how like Margaret Hat- Atwood will move time forward in a novel. And it's just so helpful to have Margaret Atwood next to me saying, Amy, no, no, I'd never do that. Of course, I don't know Margaret Atwood, but I sort of feel like I do now. So I wish I wish Margaret Atwood would sit by, but I think that would be intimidating. Maybe I just prefer her yeah. books. Let's just I mean, I've heard she's really amazing, but I also agree that I'd be a little intimidated. Um, I was told that Tim Winton was the author oh, thank that you, you were looking for. Oh, yes. I, I I get nervous on these things and my and names just oh. like go straight out the window for me. Um so. I'll be honest, that's probably <laughs> my weakest skill as a librarian is I can't think of the name when I need it. I can tell you what the cover looks like, I can tell you how big it is, I can tell you everything else, but I can never think of the author. So you're not alone. Um, I like asking that question because um, I get a, such a range of responses and I get a list of books or authors that I should also try, which so, you know, it's a win-win for me, but it also is so nice to see how your own reading habits in, influence or do not influence your work and, and your process. And that's really interesting to see um, for sure. You know what's um, funny? Jessica, if I could throw yeah. in one thing, what Amy said, sort of, I forgot. I do do one thing before I wrote all of the Timmy books. I read every single time a book called Confederacy of Dunces by John Kennedy Chu, ah. which I think yeah, is yeah, the, yeah. Best, the best written humor that exists, this New Orleans uh, writer. And I did it um, for the rhythm of the sentences. 
uh, and it just gets you in a frame of mind. Sort of like you ever heard um, famously Hunter Thompson uh, typed out um, uh, The Great Gatsby. Uh, he literally retyped yeah. the entire book. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, to just get the rhythm yeah. of the words locked mm. into his brain. So I do that with Confederacy because um, I, I think that's the best humor anybody's written. I forget I, how I'm that. I'm literally do, making do you a remember list. How that, do you remember how that starts? Isn't it got like the best first sentence ever? Like doesn't uh, it yeah, go yeah, yeah. on well, like a paragraph? It's like the woman his, or the- Yeah, his, his, uh, his hat <laughs> um, squeezes the fleshy head or something. Like it's- yes. Yeah, yeah, it's something like that. I'm a crazy <laughs> fan. When I was in New Orleans, I sought out all the sites that have to do with his life. Um, I just, I think he's the greatest, so. Anyways. Oh, that's so cool. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to look at that again. It's been a yeah. long time since I've, yeah. I've read that and I'm like, oh yes. <laughs> it's <fantastic. Okay>. yeah. <laughs> no, I love this. Um, well, and I'm going to put it on hold at the library after we, we <laughs> leave this conversation. Um, kind of switching gears, but forcing you to, to think back a little bit, you know, I'm, I'm sure it was only just a few years ago for all of us. What were your favorite books as a child to read? Do you have any that stick out in your mind of of reading and thinking, I, I either I wish I could do something like that, or this is what I want to do with my life, or um, I'll give you a second to think about that. Um, I know it never occurred to me to become a librarian, even though I alphabetized all of my books at home and I had a checkout system with my brother and my sister, never occurred to me. But I could easily tell you that my favorite books as a kid, A Tree Grows in Brooklyn, I knew it forwards, backwards, upside down, every which way. Um, and, you know, the entire Wizard of Oz series, all of those. Wow. So what were some of your distinct memories as a child? Yeah, I mean, I mean, it's been first on this one, just because I know it, it's sort of a sideways answer, but it was um, reading Peanuts books. Um, I was oh, six, yeah. six years old in my aunt's house. She had a whole shelf of them and I read them. And at that young age, I knew I wanted to do that just one day. I wanted to draw a comic strip. That was, that's really the, that was the start of everything for me. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I had a I had a big red Reader's Digest fairy tale book. It's it was it was not high literature in any way, but I read it several times. Um, and I I don't think I don't think um, I read it all. I read it many times. Um, I think the thing for me that made me want to become a writer was having a library card more. I, I got this library card and my mom had told me that I could check out any book in the library. This was my first taste of power. <laughs> and I am telling you, I like I took that very seriously that she said I could have anything. So I remember going up from the children's section, heading to the adult section. There was this huge, um, this huge sort of I called it kind of a pulpit which kind of tells you how I felt about it. But I was a little kid. I would, I remember taking this card, putting it up on the <laughs> desk like this yeah. and going, you're going to have to. And I knew that. And then I, and then I picked out books from the kids and the adult section. And I, I remember the first time I checked out an Agatha Christie, the woman looked over the counter. I remember it like <laughs> looking over the counter at me and said, does your mother know you're checking this out? But I had the magic card. So yep. I knew I could get this thing. And so I said, I, you know, I, anyway, but I think that I just loved reading so much that I think eventually I just wanted to try it. You know, it, I just liked this form i liked reading these things and i i just think that eventually if you like something you think i'm going to try this you don't know if you're actually going to be successful but you just want to give it a try so that's where it came from for me that you library know, card you know what i remember um speaking of that amy and Jessica, i remember <laughs> um at my library in the 70s in san marino the suburb of la um, they had this program in the summer i don't know how common this is but like if you read 20 books 
you get mm -hmm. this one certificate. If you read 30, you get this one. I wanted the top certificate. Just <laughs> um, I remember being seven and just wanting that. So that really sparked reading. That was a very effective with, with little Stefan. So yeah, <laughs> they still do those. Um, and I remember doing I, I in mine in Minnesota and, and my brother and I got in trouble because they thought for sure we had faked our list because there was no way we could read that much so quickly. Little did they know. <laughs> we we definitely could. Um, but yes, the summer reading programs are alive and well. Um, and um, I, I would love if they brought back the full book it program where you read and you get the personal pan pizza from Pizza Hut. Oh, they still right. do versions of that, oh, but not as much as they did now. in the 80s. I'll do that this summer. I mean, I know. I, I, I want to bring this back the adult version. Um, and uh, yes. So, okay. <laughs> Was was there any one big moment, and again, this is for either or both of you, where you kind of took a step back and thought, oh my gosh, this is it. I've made it. Um, either meeting someone that you had always looked up to or seeing your book on the shelf at a Target or what was, what was that one moment for you? Ooh. Amy, do you, you have a do you have a made it moment? <laughs> I, I have a have, I have a crazy you, you? one that that's okay. still oh, really good. Tell me, tell me I was tell in Vancouver do. and they so Disney made a movie which I got to co-write of the first Timmy book, and I got to be on the set. But I'm there on one particular day when a stunt driver drives this car 40 miles an hour into a home <laughs> they have built for the sole purpose of getting a car driven into it. And it's all happening because on the first page of the first Timmy book, Timmy drives a car into a house. So I'm just standing there with 200 people around me thinking, that's like mind blowing. I just, I just typed that on my laptop. And it's like, it, it's, it was almost like your imagination exploded uh -huh. into real life. Yeah. And you were living, like everyone was now living in your head. Like it was, I'll never get over that. that, was like, that was <laughs> I love cool. that that was the point, not the signing of the contract or no. anything else. Yeah. Like that was it. The house. Yeah. That was, wow. That was, That's amazing. Yeah. That, that yeah. Well, I mean, I, I mean, when, when my, when my first, when my first book, you know, showed up, that was, that was very exciting. Um, it was very exciting. I, I, I think then I felt like, okay, I've, I've, I've done this thing that I worked a long time to get to do. I think, I mean, speaking of like the mind exploding, I had, okay, so I know I just showed you this illustration. This is the most recent, the skunk and badger. This illustration was the first one that I saw that John, I, actually, John didn't send it to me. Um, the publisher did, and it's of Badger sitting at his rock table. And that was a very surreal moment for me. I just, I had, I did, didn't know what the art was going to look like for the, I knew that John was doing it. I knew what John did, but I, I hadn't seen anything for this book. And so it just came in an email and I opened it up and I thought, I, I was, it, it, it was as if, Someone had taken a picture, a photograph of ba of Badger at his rock room table for me. And I just, everything in that, everything in it was, it was so real that it was slightly creepy. Like, I just, I was like, how did, that's my head. And someone has now reached in, taken something out and there's Badger, but I knew yeah. John had been involved in some way and that that wasn't really Badger, but really it felt like it was Badger. I don't even know how to describe it, but it was so weird in a weird way. And I just, I was like, oh my gosh. And so, you know, then the editor's like, well, what do you think? And I'm like, well, that's Badger. <laughs> was, what do you mean? What it's do like, I think? <laughs> it was a photograph, right? Oh my gosh. Amy, anyway, so. Amy, can I ask you a question? How does that work when you write a book and someone else illustrates it? Do you give guidance? 
in terms of how you want them to look? Do you have input on the illustrator? How does that stuff work? Well, in this case, um, in this case, what happened was John Clausen is represented by the same agent that as me. And so when I sent the manuscript to Steve Mock at Writer's House, he he said um, he suggested John. He he actually, you know, we talked about stuff, but it was very nice that he included me in that <laughs> discussion. But then yeah. he said then he said, well, you know, what do you think about John? And I I I knew his stuff and I looked him I looked it up. I looked him up, though, too, just to, because I just thought, well, I just want to make sure, you know, yeah. that the humor is the same. And I as, so, uh, as soon as I saw it, I thought, oh, yeah, this would be so perfect. But I mean, who knows if he's going to really want to do this anyway. So but Steve put us to uh, after he showed John, John wanted to do it. So then we put he put us together. It was a verbal agreement. <laughs> was a verbal agreement that we wouldn't do, we wouldn't sell without the other, Yeah. <laughs> you right. know? And then he showed it to the publishers. So that's how it, so that's how that worked. And I did not speak to John. I saw, I saw a few like images as John was saying, this is what I want to do with this story. And he asked, you know, they so they were asking, are you OK that there's not like 200 little drawings in here, that these are just going to be, you know, tip in art that we slide in on this special paper. And then, you know, th there's black and whites in here and other stuff. But he, he wasn't going to do like like all these little things. And I was I was I, I liked that idea, honestly, because. Um, so anyway, I liked that idea. So then. When it went to the publisher, I finished up with the publisher. The publisher then sent it to John. But I at least did say, you know, if you want to put art notes in. And I just I don't I didn't know how to do that. I'd never I've I haven't worked no. with an illustrator very much. I've only I have one other book that's illustrated and it's with uh, Adam Rex, who's really good. So wasn't. You know, I've never had any hard times working with an illustrator, but I also didn't know how to do art notes. So basically what I did, I but I had to put them in. So what I did was I would only suggest like every time a new, for instance, every time a new character came in, I would say art note. This is a Fisher. And I so Fisher. <laughs> Oops, wait, it's not this one. It's this one. Fisher is actually a Fisher. So I put the Latin name in so that he knew that it was actually a Fisher. Uh, <laughs> and that, you know, and that these were the things that I said he wore in the clothes. So he always wears a ye lemon yellow suit. He has lemon yellow loafers. He has a fedora, you know. So I would just write down whatever I had written in the text because I knew that that would be a pain in the butt yeah. to try to find all that stuff. So and in the first book, like there was an art note because there's a chicken that appears on page five that it is the same chicken that appears on page 45 and it was a pain for me to find that so i just said art note in case this is important the chicken on page four is the same chicken on page five and it is a dominicker whatever chicken you know just so he didn't have any trouble like digging that stuff up because that's a, that was what i thought would be a pain so that's all but, I did. Does that does that sound like a good idea? Yeah. Can you just tell me. Do I say does that <laughs> no, sound good great. to you? Are you like horrified? Because no, I like, don't know what I did. <laughs> no, it's crazy though because it it's so different than what I do since I'm doing both. But like it makes me think um, when I go to design a character, I have to just keep in my head on page two hundred her big hair gets caught in something. So when when she appears on page one from the start, she's got to have big hair. So if I was working with John. I might forget that note. And then there's like, you know, so there's there's so many things that I have to just keep in my head and you've got to communicate them all to somebody else. That's one issue. The other one is, especially yeah. with humor, tone is everything. So, mm -hmm. you know, I got my tone from Peanuts, just that that really low, mellow. It's not, it's not slapstick. There's very few like big expressions. 
Um, and if you do that, it, it, to me, it really kind of blows the humor. So if I'm not on the same page as somebody illustrating a book, that would be uh, a definite issue. So, I, so I'm fascinated by um, how, how you do that, how you split those duties. That, that's interesting to me. Well, I think, I think it was probably, I mean, the, the question for that would, you, you need to ask Stephen Mock at Writer's House, because yeah. I think he was the one that really knew that the two of us would be a good match. Yeah. I, he's the one. That's great. Yeah. I, I always love questions like this because as a librarian, I, I only know so much and most of it is more superficial until we start having these conversations. And then it's like, oh yeah, I have no, you know, I never met my illustrator. I never met my author. And, and sometimes they work very closely together. I, I feel like I've heard every variation of that response over the years. And it's always so interesting to see. I love the behind the scenes. Um, I envy how you as authors are able to take and create this world and maintain all of these details over time as you tell the story over a series of books, multiple multiple story arcs and everything that, that blows my mind. <laughs> so I definitely admire that. Um, any, I'm trying to think, I've got my list of questions, anything that we can wrap up with. Um, is there any book that you wish had your name on the front of it? Something that you've read and you said, man, I wish I'd had that idea. Oh, tons. Yeah. I mean, well, to go back to the Confederacy of Dunces, but then Dave, okay. Dave Pilkey's ability to just tap into his eight-year-old brain is, is, uh, yeah is an incredible skill. Uh, there was a cartoonist named Richard Thompson who did a strip called Cul-de-Sac that was pure brilliance. And I see those guys and I just I just envy the ability to do that stuff. You always wanna to go to that space when you create, sometimes you succeed, sometimes you don't, but you at least always strive to match that of your heroes, you know? Yeah. Very true. Yeah, I, I, um, any of uh, Jane Gardam's kids' books, I'd be really pleased to have written. I also I also love Eva Ibbotson and uh, Polly Horvath a lot. So any of those books as well, really love them. Uh, well, I really appreciate having both of you here. Um, and I'm hoping next year that we will be back to an in-person event. But whenever that happens, I hope that we can have you back with Southern Festival of Books. And, and just thank you for taking the time out of your night tonight to be here and, and just answer all of my really random questions. I appreciate it. <laughs> ah, it's our pleasure. My pleasure. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. This was really fun. Thank you. Thank you. Nice to meet you, both of you. You too. Yes. <laughs> you too. <laughs>